Hey there, anime Stark fans. Welcome back to our channel. You asked for it, and we're here with What If Deku Married Toga Himiko Part 2. So, grab your quirks and let's dive into this intriguing hypothetical scenario. It's Sunday morning, the day after Izuku's group of friends followed him on his date with Toga to meet her. They saw the couple enter a love hotel, and this made them return to the dorms with a very different view of their green-haired friend. At this moment, Izuku left his room with messy hair, still sleepy, wearing black shorts and a loose white shirt that revealed his collarbone and part of his chest. He simply walked down the stairs to the common room, scratching his neck and yawning. Good morning, everyone, Izuku greeted his friends with a small smile. They were all sitting on the sofas in the common room, the same group from the previous day, except for Ojiro, who had left early for training. The girls were on one sofa, while their partners were on another. Saro and Mineta were in different seats, dressed in black suits. Mineta turned to look at Izuku with black agent-style glasses and a serious expression. Good morning, Midoriya, he said in a cold tone, looking at Izuku. We were waiting for you, Saro added, also wearing black glasses and an intense, analytical expression while crossing his fingers methodically, giving off an unsettling vibe. What's going on, guys? Izuku asked, intrigued by his friend's different, strange looks. Todoroki regarded him with his usual calm, Kaminari looked envious, Kirishima admired him, and Bakugo, well, he had his usual bad attitude when he was serious. On the other hand, Uraka, Jiru, and Momo had blushes on their cheeks and couldn't look him in the eye. Finally, Mina wore black glasses and pretended to smoke a lollipop like a cigarette. Mina, with a mafioso-like air, removed the lollipop with her gaze fixed on Izuku. You see, Midoriya, we need to talk to you about something important. Mina said before sighing as if she were smoking. Okay, but why won't you look at me, girls? Izuku asked the three girls who still couldn't look him in the face. I I it's because. We. We, Uraka tried to say, but nerves got in the way. It was hard to process that their best friend was now an adult who had done various things with his girlfriend. We all saw your girlfriend, stupid Deku, Bakugo said seriously, glancing at his childhood friend. It's true. Yesterday we followed you to a love hotel, Momo said, trying to get over her nerves as she turned to look at Izuku. I know, Izuku replied simply. What? They all exclaimed, shocked and surprised, looking at Izuku, who smiled a bit while scratching his cheek. I said I already know. Toga and I realized it almost from the beginning, Izuku explained, somewhat amused by his friend's incredulous reactions. So, you knew and still went to that love hotel? Mina asked amazed by the courage her friend must have had to do such a thing despite being observed. Well, to be honest, we only went there to play a prank. We didn't even enter in the first place, the green-haired boy replied, smiling somewhat embarrassed, which only added salt to Mineta's and Saro's wound. You damn bastard, Saro exclaimed angrily, taking off his glasses to grab Izuku by the collar of his shirt. On top of having an amazing girlfriend, you dare to play a prank on us, lucky jerk. Mineta complained with rage, hitting Izuku's leg like a child, while Izuku just smiled, finding it all quite amusing. With Bakugo, the situation was more complicated, as Kirishima, Kaminari, and Todoroki had to collaborate to prevent him from attacking the green-haired boy. Let go of me so I can kill him, Bakugo shouted in anger, having the strength of four men, as the guys were struggling to hold him back. Stop it, Bakugo. It was our fault for spying. Todoroki calmly told the ash blonde boy while holding him in a headlock to prevent him from breaking free. A few more minutes passed, and everyone had calmed down, standing and looking at Izuku. And we thought you had reached adulthood before the rest of us, Kaminari said with relief, bringing a hand to his forehead, thinking it was absurd that Izuku, who was the shyest in their first year, would be the first to mature. This comment made Izuku blush and look away with a nervous smile. Well, uh, that's, Izuku stammered with a suspicious embarrassment that was enough for everyone to understand its meaning. Damn you, Midoriya. Now I'm really going to kill you, Mineta exclaimed, crying with envy, and once again, he began hitting Izuku's leg like a child. After that, the doorbell rang, and everyone heard it. I'll get it, Todoroki said calmly, then walked towards the entrance. You really went far with that prank, Midoriya, Momo said to her green-haired friend, who had taken things a bit too seriously. Hey, sorry, it was actually Toga's idea to take you to that place, Izuku replied, scratching his head. She did look friendly, I'd like to meet her, Mina commented with a big smile and her hands behind her back. Oh, 
if that's the case, it's her, Izuku was about to say but was interrupted by Todoroki, who returned with the group. Sorry, I ran into someone interesting at the entrance, Todoroki said calmly, capturing everyone's attention as they focused on the person beside him. The individual was of medium height, wearing a slightly dented, full-body knight's armor that included an equally worn helmet, with red bangs peeking out from the back. Her gear was completed with a standard short sword and a small round shield. The figure was presumed to be female because the armor accentuated her curves, and it should be mentioned that her presence was intimidating with her silence. But what the hell? Saro asked, confused, just like the rest, except for Izuku. Goblins, the unknown person in armor replied, her voice revealing her female gender. Who the heck are you? Kirishima asked with intrigue, as the stranger had arrived uninvited. I'm Goblin Slayer, the girl replied seriously, pointing to herself with her thumb. Goblin Slayer? What do you want? Kyoka asked, intrigued but still cautious as the stranger held a sword in her right hand. Goblin Slayer pointed her sword towards Mineta's neck, who froze in fear and swallowed hard. Hunt this weird purple goblin. Goblin Slayer exclaimed loudly, surprising the rest. What? I'm not a goblin, Mineta exclaimed, trying to save his life. They always say that, Goblin Slayer said before raising her sword above her head and then bringing it down in a swift motion causing Mineta to close his eyes in fear. After a few seconds, Mineta opened his eyes and realized he wasn't injured. He looked ahead to see Sarah with outstretched arms, heroically protecting him, with the sword just inches from his shoulder. Sarah looked at Goblin Slayer with a smile, while she remained eerily silent. Wait a minute, as much as we've wanted to kill Mineta before, we can't let you do it without some compensation, Sarah said, then displayed an open hand in front of him, rubbing his thumb and index finger together, indicating a financial contribution. The others had no problem with that and nodded seriously, arms crossed, ready to receive that donation. Are you asking for money, you jerks? Mineta exclaimed to the rest with tears, unable to believe that he actually thought they'd save him out of goodwill. They just wanted money and were willing to let him die. Goblin Slayer sheathed her sword and tilted her head slightly to the side. How much money are we talking about? Goblin Slayer asked with curiosity, mimicking Saro's gesture of rubbing his fingers together. This left everyone puzzled by the question, thinking that perhaps Goblin Slayer hadn't understood what they meant. Hey, you can stop with that now, Toga, Izuku said to Goblin Slayer with a playful smile as he approached her with his hands on his hips. Toga? Everyone exclaimed, surprised and shocked to discover the true identity behind Goblin Slayer. In response to the green-haired boy's request, the armored knight slowly removed her helmet to reveal her beautiful face, with yellow eyes and messy blonde hair tied in two buns. It was Toga, who laughed merrily at the reactions of those present. Ha ha ha, you guys are funny, Toga said with a big smile as she looked at her boyfriend's friends, who were still in shock. You might have seen me yesterday, but I suppose I should introduce myself properly, she added, regaining her composure with a calm expression. I'm Himiko Toga, 17 years old, and I'm Izuku Kun's girlfriend although I guess you already know that last part, Toga introduced herself in a friendly manner, and she said the last part with a playful smile, referencing their attempted spying from the previous day. Without further ado, Momo cleared her throat and approached Toga in a courteous manner as she was accustomed to when meeting someone new. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Momo Yaoyorozu, and I'm a friend of Midoriya's, Momo introduced herself with a small, polite smile, extending her hand to shake Toga's. Toga shook Momo's hand with her gauntleted one, wearing a lovely smile. I know, Izuku Kun has told me about all of you, even the blonde bomb enthusiast, Toga said, and immediately, a vein popped on the ash blonde boy's forehead. What did you say, you? Bakugo exclaimed angrily, sharp teeth exposed, fists clenched menacingly, but this didn't seem to face Toga, who continued to smile at Momo. Please calm down, Kachan, she's just teasing you a little Izuku said to his childhood friend with a small smile, trying to calm him. You shut up, Deku. What the hell is she doing here? Bakugo shouted at the green-haired boy angrily, pointing blatantly at the blonde girl, who grinned playfully. Well, since you were so determined to spy on us yesterday, we decided to divert our date so that I could finally meet you all, Toga replied, with Izuku nodding to confirm her words. Although it's a shame that the others aren't here yet, I suppose it'll have to be another time, Izuku said calmly, looking at his friends. And may I ask why you're dressed like that? Kyoka asked with curiosity, looking at the blonde. It goes without saying that her armor attire was quite unusual. It's the costume I'm going to wear to a convention that Izuku-kun and I are going to in the afternoon. 
Toga responded with adorable excitement, raising her arms in the air. There was a convention, and I didn't hear about it? Mineta exclaimed in alarm, clutching his head in despair. What will you do there, Mineta? Kirishima asked the purple-haired boy with curiosity. Mineta turned to look at him with a serious expression, placing his fingers on the bridge of his nose as if he were wearing glasses. I'm obviously going to the Dujinshi and Arage section, and I might even sneak into the Hentai section, he replied with a hint of mischief around him, which seemed absurd to everyone else who watched him. You're really messed up, old man, Kaminari told Mineta, feeling sorry for him. You didn't say that when you asked me to lend you some magazines, Mineta said, pointing accusingly at the blonde until he elbowed him in the stomach to silence him. What did he say? Kyoka asked her boyfriend with seriousness and crossed arms, making Kaminari nervous. And nothing, Kyoka. You know how Mineta is, he always says silly things, Kaminari replied to Jiru with a tense and nervous smile, while Mineta tried to catch his breath, kneeling on the floor. Anyway, what are you going to dress up as, Deku-kun? Uraka asked her best friend with curiosity. Izuku smiled, closing his eyes and putting his index finger to his lips. It's going to be a surprise, Izuku said, and his friends became intrigued about what his costume would be. I have a great idea, why don't you come with us? Toga said to Izuku's friends, who were surprised by the proposal and began to consider it. I'll pass, those places don't interest me, Todoroki said firmly, showing his lack of interest, which disappointed Momo. Oh, come on. I'm sure Momo-chan would love to see you in a costume, Toga said to Todoroki with a smile to convince him. Did Midoriya also tell you about our relationship? Momo asked with a blush on her cheeks, looking at the blonde, who innocently turned to her. Not at all, but your eyes lit up when you heard the idea and you looked at him, Toga replied, making the dark-haired girl even more embarrassed. Todoroki glanced at her reaction and then sighed, closing his eyes. All right, I'll go, Todoroki said, willing to make the sacrifice for his girlfriend who deserved it. Momo looked excited with sparkling eyes, looking at her bicolor boyfriend who smiled slightly. I'm not going either, I have to finish the assignment I didn't do all week, Sero said somewhat dejected, with a dark blue aura surrounding him. Ha ha, that's why you're inferior to me. I, the great Lord Mineta, always leave things to the last minute to make the most of leisure time, Mineta exclaimed arrogantly and in a victorious pose, knowing that there are others in the world who share his strategy. Cough, you know who I'm talking about, cough. You're a pathetic being, no one is inferior to you, Sero told Mineta, feeling sorry for his perverted purple-haired friend with poor grades. I don't think we can go, we don't have costumes for these conventions, Uraka commented, disappointed because she wanted to go with her friends to see what those events were like. Izuku approached her and placed a hand on her shoulder to get her attention. You can actually wear your Halloween costumes, Uraka-chan. In the end, you'll blend in with anime or video game characters, Izuku told his brown-haired friend, who smiled happily at the idea. That's true, with your nurse costume, you could pass as a nurse from Silent Hill, Kaminari said, remembering Uraka's haunted hospital nurse outfit. And Bakugo? Mina asked, curious about her explosive blonde friend's costume. He just scowled and crossed his arms. Kirishima thought for a moment while looking at the ceiling. Hmm. Bomberman? He suggested, causing Toga and Mina to burst into laughter. Bakugo got angry and yelled at them to stop. You can use your Halloween costume too, Kachan, Izuku told Katsuki calmly. I never said I was going, Bakugo shouted at the green-haired boy angrily. Oh, you didn't? Uraka asked her boyfriend with puppy dog eyes, making her look very adorable. In response, the ash blonde boy turned away irritably. TCH, I'm just going to buy the latest battlefield, he said, and Uraka smiled happily. Are you all going to? Mina asked Jiru and Kaminari. It will be another time for us. I have tickets to a concert, and I don't plan to miss it, Kyoka replied calmly, showing the tickets, and Kaminari nodded. Anyway, it was nice to meet you, Toga-san, Kaminari said to his friend's girlfriend, who turned out to be really fun and friendly. Likewise, Pikachu boy, Toga replied with joy and friendliness. It was nice meeting you, Toga-san. I hope we can see each other soon, Kyoka said to the blonde with a small smile before she and Kaminari left the place. Well, I want to go with you. I want to talk more with you. Mina told Toga excitedly and was eager to get information about her relationship with Izuku. If Mina and Bakugo are going, then count me in, Kirishima exclaimed enthusiastically, raising a fist in the air. Have any of you seen Venom? 
we can talk about that, Toga asked the rest, causing Bakugo to click his tongue in annoyance and Kirishima to become depressed. P please don't tell me anything, Toga-san. Unfortunately, I haven't seen it, Kirishima replied, a tear in his eye and a blue aura surrounding him. What a pity. Izuku-kun does a very good Venom impersonation, Toga said, smiling and turning her gaze toward her boyfriend, who smiled apologetically while scratching his head. Are you going to wear that costume all day? Momo asked Toga, looking at the armor that seemed very sturdy but also uncomfortable. Of course not. I just put it on to surprise you, I have clothes under the costume, Toga replied, amused, while Uraka and Momo nodded in relief. Then, the blonde raised her hand to adjust her armor, and she started to sweat. The thing is, I'm getting cooked in here. Can I use your bathroom? Toga asked, making some of them sweat nervously. I'll guide you, Toga, Izuku said to his girlfriend kindly, but he was stopped by Saro in front of him. You stay with us, Midoriya. You won't make any moves on our watch, Saro said again, wearing his black shades, while Mineta tried to do the same, but due to his short stature, he wasn't as effective. Then follow me, Toga-chan, Uraka said to the blonde in a friendly manner, receiving a nod from Toga, who started to follow her. I'll come with you too, I want to get to know you better, Momo told Toga with a small smile, joining them on their way. In that case, I'm the only one left to join your team, Mina exclaimed with enthusiasm. Above her appeared a dialogue box with the message, Mina has joined your team to defeat the Demon King, accompanied by video game music. After that, the girls left the place, leaving the boys alone in silence. I'll always be a mystery to me why girls go to the bathroom together, Kirishima said, looking into space as if contemplating a universe mystery. It must be something like in a gang neighborhood, when someone new arrives, they have to interrogate and prove their worth, Mineta commented with a gangster air, as if he were in a low-income neighborhood in America. I think you watch too many movies of that kind, Mineta, Izuku said with a small, nervous smile, looking at the purple-haired boy. After that, all the boys went to sit on the sofas in front of the TV. What time did you arrive, Midoriya? Todoroki asked his best friend calmly. I got here at midnight, but luckily, Ida-kun didn't discover me because I entered through my bedroom window, Izuku calmly replied, remembering how fortunate he was to have vines that allowed him to climb to his room. The boy noticed an intense gaze and turned in another direction to see Bakugo looking at him seriously. I'm going to make it clear, Deku. I won't lose to you, Katsuki told Izuku with determination, confusing the green-haired boy. What do you mean, Kachan? Izuku asked, not understanding why his childhood friend was challenging him. Bakugo has been jealous that you've gotten further with Toga than he has with Uraka, Saro explained with a teasing smile, looking at Bakugo, while Izuku just shrank a bit in embarrassment in his seat. Shut up, flat face. The blonde yelled at Saro in anger, and Saro smiled, finding it amusing. Kirishima gave Izuku a few light nudges, getting his attention. You didn't deny it, Midoriya. So is it true that you've gone that far? The redhead asked, and Izuku looked away with a blush on his cheeks. I, I don't feel very comfortable talking about that, Izuku said, fidgeting with his fingers and wanting to change the topic as soon as possible. Then, a light bulb lit up over his head, and he turned to his friends. How about we play video games? Izuku asked with a smile. All right, let's make a deal. Saro said, looking challengingly at Izuku, capturing his attention. If I beat you in Call of Duty, then you'll tell us everything we want to know, the dark-haired boy declared, pointing at Izuku, who smiled innocently. And what if I win? Izuku asked, and Mineta stood up from his seat. We won't ask you anything that makes you feel nervous, Mineta replied with a mocking expression, as Saro was indeed an expert in shooting games. Agreed, Izuku accepted with an innocent smile, giving the impression of being a complete novice. Fifteen minutes later. Why the heck can't I beat you? Saro exclaimed, exasperated and desperate, putting his hands on his head and hitting his forehead against the floor as he was defeated once again. That's ten wins for Saro and ten wins for Midoriya, Todoroki said calmly, giving the result. How the hell are you so good, Midoriya? Mineta asked the green-haired boy who was sitting cross-legged on the couch with the game controller in his hands. The truth is, I play video games often, but I'm actually not that good compared to Toga, Izuku replied with a small smile while scratching his cheek, causing Saro and Mineta to be stunned. Toga is better than you at video games? Saro exclaimed, shocked and truly amazed that his friend's girlfriend was as good as she claimed, as Izuku was a killing machine even with just a six-bullet gun and a knife. 
Izuku nodded in response to his friend's question. In almost all games except for fighting games, where we're evenly matched. But yes, she's much better than me overall, the green-haired boy replied, and Sarah was left speechless, his spirit almost leaving his body. It was to be expected, otherwise, they wouldn't be going to an anime and video game convention, Todoroki commented, closing his eyes and resting on his knees. Aren't the girls taking too long? Mineta asked, intrigued, noticing that it had been about 15 minutes since they left, and they hadn't returned yet. I guess so. I hope nothing has happened, Izuku said, somewhat concerned for his friends, but especially for Toga. By pure coincidence, the girls arrived in the common room, in view of the boys. Toga was wearing a black tank top with a red blouse on top, revealing her shoulders. She also had black mini shorts and red sneakers. The thing is, there was a sense of friendship around them, and their expressions looked different than before. They seemed more serious and committed. It took you a while, what happened? Izuku asked the girls as they approached the sofas. Nothing special, just girl stuff, Momo replied with a confident smile and then sat next to Todoroki. Let's say we're good friends now, Toga said with a sideways smile as she glanced at Mina, who smiled in the same way. That's the spirit, sister. You're welcome anytime, Mina replied, looking at Toga and extending a fist in her direction, a gesture Toga reciprocated as they fist bumped with intense confidence, almost like there could be some background explosions. Something happened in that bathroom, all the guys thought. Oh, were you playing? Toga asked excitedly. Yes, wanna join us? Izuku proposed with a small smile as he handed her a controller. Do you have Smash Brothers? Toga asked curiously. Yes, why? Mineta said, somewhat confused. I challenge you to beat me, Toga declared with a defiant expression, pointing at Izuku's friends, surprising both the guys and the girls. That's pretty bold, Toga-chan, Uraka told her new friend, as it wouldn't be fair for three guys to compete against her. I'll play. Someone has to put her in her place, Bakugo said, smiling with a threatening air. I'm in too, sounds exciting, Kirishima exclaimed with enthusiasm, eager to join the exciting battle. Of course, I can't miss this. In Smash, I'm unstoppable with Lucario, Sero said, pointing to himself with his thumb, his ego pumped up at the idea of competing in a game he was good at. They lost the moment they accepted, Izuku commented with a small smile, knowing that victory was already assured for his girlfriend. Koga nodded at the enthusiasm of her three opponents and then moved to sit between Izuku's legs, sitting very close to him, which embarrassed him a little and surprised the rest with her boldness. Kirby is mine, Toga said defiantly as she settled in between her boyfriend's legs, causing her backside to rub against Izuku, who lowered his gaze in embarrassment, aware that his friends were watching. Nice move, Mina commented with a mischievous look at her sister, who received the controller from Izuku. Lucky guy, Mineta and Sarah thought, envious of Izuku, who had a beautiful blonde girl comfortably settled between his legs as if she had been there for a long time. P please be gentle with them, Izuku whispered in Toga's ear in an attempt to save his friend's pride. You know me, Izuku-kun, Toga replied to the green-haired boy, smiling affectionately, and then turned her gaze to the TV. I never go easy, she added with a smirk and an excited look as she adjusted her hands on the game console. It's a multi-platform console capable of processing any game you want. Hey, sorry, guys, I tried, the green-haired boy told his friends, who paid no attention and were ready to defeat the blonde girl who had challenged them, unaware of the consequences. 20 minutes later. And with that, Toga wins her 10th victory. The Smash Brothers queen, Mina exclaimed with excitement, raising Toga's hand as if she had won a boxing match. The blonde girl had a wide and indelible victory smile on her face. That's how it's done, kids. Toga told the three losers who hadn't come close to beating her in any round. I give up, it's clear who dominated the games, Saro admitted, sitting on the floor with his arms supporting him and a gloomy aura surrounding him. You're so manly, Toga Nizan, Kirishima exclaimed, admiring the blonde, whom he now deeply respected and looked at with admiration like a little kid looking up to their older sister. I'll allow the compliment, Kiri Kiri, just for giving me the most challenge, Toga said to the redhead with the nickname he had come up with during a game when she sent his Donkey Kong flying off the screen. Oh, hell no, I demand a rematch. Bakugo protested angrily, refusing to be outdone by his rival's girlfriend. Maybe later, I'm tired of beating you so much, Toga replied casually, stretching a bit as she leaned against Izuku, who wrapped his arms around her. Hey, you're probably scared of losing, Bakugo said with a sly smile, trying to provoke the blonde, 
which made her look at him presumptuously. Oh yeah? Weren't the last ten matches enough to show you the truth? Toga said with a proud smile that irritated the ash blonde. And what truth is that, pretty girl? Bakugo asked, his competitive spirit burning. That I'm the wall you can't break through, Toga replied straightforwardly, winking playfully at Katsuki. Hearing this, Bakugo smiled. Hey, I like you, pretty girl, the ash blonde said before settling back in his spot, now with a newfound respect for his rival's girlfriend, who clearly had the guts to challenge him like that. You've earned the respect of the guys in no time, Uraka commented, amazed at how quickly Toga had made a name for herself among them. Hey, she hasn't won my respect yet, Mineta exclaimed, feeling offended. You don't count as one of the guys, Momo said with a cold and emotionless expression, which was enough to send the dwarf to a corner in a state of depressive crying. Now that I'm here, Izuku-kun, can you show me your room? Toga asked cheerfully, and he smiled and nodded. Sure, I can finally lend you the Overlord novels, Izuku told the blonde as she got up, and he followed suit. That maid in abyss shirt you showed me on the phone, it looked really comfy, Toga added, taking her boyfriend's hand. It'll probably be too big for you, Izuku teased, imagining how large his Nanachi hoodie with ears on the hood would be on her. I know, Toga replied with a cute smile and a childlike head shake. We're not leaving you two alone, Sero declared, emerging from his depression and looking at them with seriousness, accusing them. We won't let you get all lovey-dovey here. Mineta added angrily, thinking about the likelihood that once left alone, they would become very affectionate. Toga turned to look at the two of them seriously. And who decided that? Toga asked, then turned on her heels and began to walk toward Saro and Mineta, tension increasing in the air. Will my fiery love be swallowed by a bit of your jealousy? And who decided that? Toga continued, making herself appear imposing and intimidating, with each step adding palpable pressure to the atmosphere. The blonde stopped in front of Saro and Mineta, who were trembling in fear. The only one who can decide such a thing. Is me, she declared, giving them a stern look of power and authority. This made it clear to the others that Toga is a girl no one should mess with for their own good. It's worth mentioning that Bakugo now regarded her more favorably, while Kirishima and Mina secretly admired her in their minds. We're so sorry, Toga-sama. Saro apologized, kneeling and pressing his forehead to the ground in complete submission. Please don't hate us, Mineta exclaimed, crying a river after feeling that fear and having to face the imposing presence of Izuku's girlfriend. Izuku himself watched the whole scene with calm as if he were used to seeing these outbursts from his girl. Toga softened her expression with kindness and gentleness as she crouched down to their level. I have no reason to feel hatred towards those beneath me, all I feel for them is pity, Toga said, exuding a lot of pride, and the atmosphere was calming down. In reality, Toga is to be feared, Todoroki commented calmly, as he was genuinely a bit intimidated by the blonde's presence. Hey, it's incredible that Deku is her partner, considering what she's like, Bakugo taunted his rival. Toga moved away from Saro and Mineta and returned to Izuku with innocence, as if the previous incident hadn't happened at all. Shall we go? Toga asked her green-haired boyfriend, and he nodded, and then they both headed up the stairs. Before going upstairs, Izuku turned to look at them with a small smile. You better start preparing your costumes, he advised, and then he went up the stairs, hand in hand with Toga, who was humming a song. Should we eavesdrop from the hallway? Mineta asked Saro, showing how dense he could be. Stop it. We won't let them invade my sister's privacy, Mina told both guys seriously, extending her hands to block their path, with Uraka and Momo backing her up. And since when have you become such close friends? Yesterday, you were the one suggesting to follow them, Saro said, confused, looking at Mina while Uraka and Momo supported her. Yesterday was yesterday, and now is now. The point is, we won't let them, Mina declared with seriousness, and Uraka and Momo nodded, strengthening that sense of sisterhood. All right, with that settled, let's just watch TV until it's time to get ready, Kirishima told everyone calmly, and Mineta and Saro reluctantly agreed. Some time later. We're all ready, Momo said with a small smile, showcasing her witch costume, with Todoroki dressed as a vampire beside her. We're still missing those two, Kirishima said in his werewolf costume, with Mina dressed as. Bayonetta? How did she manage to get a costume like that? They're taking too long, Bakugo said, visibly annoyed and crossing his arms, wearing a spiked collar around his neck and wolf ears on his head, while Uraka was dressed as a nurse beside him. Goblins, Toga said with her goblin slayer helmet on, 
walking down the stairs with a sword and shield in hand. Are you going to stay in character all the time? Mineta asked, dressed as a bunch of grapes. I mean, as a bunch of radioactive grapes. Nope, I just like saying goblins, Toga replied with a playful smile beneath the helmet. Where's Deku-kun? Uraka asked, intrigued. Here I am, Izuku said, coming down the stairs in his costume for everyone to see. His outfit consists of a long black tailcoat that reaches his ankles, a high-collared gray vest with black details that clings to his toned torso, black jogger-style pants, red-black accents in his outfit, and a pair of red gloves. He wears a black and white domino mask resembling that of a bird, similar to those used in Renaissance works. It's Amamiya Ren's Joker costume from Persona 5. Wow, Midoriya, you look amazing, Kirishima exclaimed, amazed by his costume. You look really great, Deku-kun, Uraka complimented with a smile, and Midoriya scratched his head, feeling a bit embarrassed. Thanks, but it's not a big deal, Izuku modestly replied, though I, as the author, must say he looks excellent in that outfit. TCH, that's nothing, Bakugo muttered, unwilling to admit that his rival looked good. Then, Todoroki placed a hand on Bakugo's shoulder. I know you don't like it, Bakugo, but you have to admit that Midoriya has style, he calmly remarked, giving a nod to a certain wizard movie. What did you expect? It's my Izuku-kun we're talking about. Toga proudly declared, waving her sword high as she showed off her boyfriend. Now that we're all ready, we should head to the convention, Momo suggested, and everyone agreed to get going. At the convention. Upon arriving at the event, they had to endure an hour-long wait in the line before finally entering. So, this is what an anime and video game convention looks like. It's certainly diverse, Todoroki commented as he observed the colorful and varied cosplays and outfits, as well as the aesthetics of various booths. I know. That's why I love being here with Izuku-kun. We meet people who share our interests and have discussions with them, Toga exclaimed with excitement, extending her arms as if welcoming everyone to the anime and video game Wonderland. Um. Where's Midoriya? Kirishima asked, intrigued and scanning the area for his friend, who had suddenly disappeared. He was just here a few seconds ago, Momo said, also looking for Izuku but failing to spot him. I think I found him, Uraka said with a small smile and a nervous sweat drop, pointing in a specific direction. This caused the rest, including Toga, to look in that direction, only to find Izuku cornered by several convention goers in various costumes, some innocent and others more provocative. Kya, you look amazing. Let's take a picture. A girl dressed as Princess Peach exclaimed, invading Izuku's personal space. You look very handsome as Joker. Another girl dressed as Kana Alberona from Fairy Tale said, giving him a mischievous look. Please take a picture with me. A girl dressed as Suzumiya Haruhi begged while making the peace sign. And with me too. Another girl dressed as Yoko Littner added. S sorry, I'm already here at the convention with my friends, and I can't. Izuku tried to explain but was interrupted. Please give me your number. A girl dressed as Cynthia from Pokemon exclaimed. Tell me your name and address. Another girl dressed as Tosaka Rin requested with clear intentions that made Izuku uncomfortable. The last girl didn't expect a sword blade to be right next to her face, and it was Toga who caused the silence, creating an eerie atmosphere. Year year days, it seems I'll have to exterminate some overzealous goblins, Toga said in a serious and intimidating tone. That boy you have there belongs to me, so I'll count to one for you to disappear, she added authoritatively, sending shivers down their spines. In an instant, instead of girls, there were only dust-casted silhouettes as they fled. One, Toga said with a satisfied smile beneath her helmet. Thank you for saving me, Toga, Izuku thanked the blonde with a small smile, although it wasn't the first time she had rescued him from a similar situation. Toga firmly held Izuku's shoulders. Don't ever wander off again, Izuku-kun. I'll protect you from those crazies, she told her boyfriend with seriousness, which made the boy blush. She then got into a defensive stance with her sword and shield, as if escorting him. I'm pretty sure the roles should be reversed, Momo commented with a sweat drop on her forehead, observing the couple who, in a strange way, complimented each other well. Well, see you later since I'm going on a mission, and I'm not sure if I'll come back, Mineta bid farewell with a half-smile and a hand over his forehead, looking at his friends for an epic send-off on his journey of perversion. But it was hard to take him seriously in his radioactive grape costume. Please don't come back, Momo prayed with her palms together and eyes closed. So be it, Mina also prayed for the absence of the perverted dwarf. How cruel, Mineta exclaimed, offended, 
before heading to the Dujinshi and Aragay section. With that, the group ventured deeper into the convention, admiring a wide variety of amazing cosplays and merchandise stalls. Look, Todoroki-kun, there are light novels of mystery and romance over there, Momo excitedly pointed to a booth since she had become a fan of those genres. I guess it wouldn't hurt to read something new from time to time, Todoroki replied calmly. They separated from the group to head towards the booth. I'm going to look for shooting games. I want my darn battlefield, Bakugo told the others with a furrowed brow, then took Uraka's hand to make sure no nerds would try to steal her away. I'd better keep an eye on him to avoid any trouble, Uraka told her friends, being dragged away with a nervous smile to make it seem like she was going willingly. I want to go to Let's Dance. Ajiro kun come. Mina excitedly pulled her red-haired boyfriend toward the booth surrounded by a crowd watching couples dance. Toga Nisan, help me. Kirishima pleaded for Toga's assistance, extending his hand and trying to resist, but Mina was incredibly strong when she wanted something. Toga crossed her arms, looking at Kirishima. Sorry, Kiri Kiri, but my sister wants to dance, and it's your duty to please her, she said with a smile beneath her helmet, and Kirishima couldn't resist any longer. No. The red-haired guy shouted dramatically as he was pulled by Mina into the crowd of people, disappearing from Izuku and Toga's view. Izuku simply wished his friend good luck and then turned to Toga. What do you want to do first, Toga? Go buy the latest volume of One Piece or get the Shadow of the Colossus remake? Izuku asked his girlfriend with a small smile. Goblin Slayer turned to look at him in silence, then raised both arms in the air. I want to do both, Toga exclaimed in a childlike manner, providing a strong contrast with her intimidating appearance. It's fun to see you so excited in that costume, Izuku said, covering his mouth amused by the looks her girlfriend was getting from the people around. Toga, upon remembering something, crossed her arms. I still think you should have dressed up as Eskinor or Guts, so we could both go in armor, she told Izuku with puffed cheeks beneath her helmet and an adorable pout. I, I just finished Persona 5 recently and gave into my fandom, Izuku replied with a nervous smile while scratching his cheek. Boo, now all the girls are looking at you like perverts, Toga said, looking in various directions as several girls blushed while looking at her boyfriend. I, it's just your imagination, Toga, the green-haired boy told the blonde, trying to calm her down, as he didn't want to get expelled from the convention due to a scene caused by her. Again. It doesn't matter, you're mine anyway, and I won't let any goblin violate you, Toga exclaimed, raising her sword towards the girls, grabbing the attention of several people who looked at her confused. One hour later. It was nearly three in the afternoon and the couples, unable to find each other, had to have lunch separately at the event's food stalls. They continued searching for each other until Todoroki and Momo encountered Kirishima and Mina. We finally found you. Many people started arriving, and it was difficult to navigate through them, Todoroki told his friends calmly, carrying a bag full of light novels and a few manga. Same here. There was a Godzilla that was hitting me with its tail, Kirishima replied with a smile, recalling how he received help from Mina to confront it and scare it away with the help of a human-sized Madoka, Saber, and Jigglypuff. Where could Bakugo and Uraka be? Mina wondered, looking in different directions. Taimi. Bakugo's shout was heard from a booth not far from them. There's our answer, Momo commented with a sweat drop on her forehead, and the four of them went to see the commotion caused by the ash blonde. Once again. When they arrived at the scene, they saw Bakugo grabbing the vendor's collar while Uraka tried to calm him down nervously. I told you to sell it to me right now. Katsuki angrily and menacingly demanded from the vendor. B but that collector's edition of Battlefield 1 is for display only. The vendor replied, very nervous and sweating in fear. I'll count to three, and if you don't sell it to me, you won't have anything left to display, Bakugo said with a maniacal and psychopathic smile, staring into the eyes of the vendor, who swallowed hard. Five minutes later, Bakugo was seen walking with the rest of the group while holding a bag containing his collector's edition of Battlefield 1. Now, that was a good deal, Bakugo said with a victorious and proud smile, recalling the fact that the payment he gave was not beating up the vendor, who accepted out of fear. I have a feeling event security will kick us out soon, Uraka commented with her arms hanging and a depressive aura around her. That's already normal when Bakugo is around, Mina said with a smile, and the ash blonde grumbled irritably. They continued walking through the event until they saw unmistakable green curls standing out in the crowd, and they approached Izuku. Oh, hi, guys, the green-haired boy greeted them calmly when they finally found him, or rather, he found them, as he was carrying a bag with the things he had bought. Hi, Deku-kun. 
Where's Toga? Uraka asked, intrigued by her friend's whereabouts. She's up there, Izuku said, pointing to the top of the stage where Toga, without her helmet, was having a discussion with a brown-haired girl also dressed as Goblin Slayer. However, her costume was undoubtedly inferior and different, with added pink adornments to the armor. I'm telling you, the manga is so much better because it's more graphic. Still, the anime is amazing for its animation and soundtrack, Toga said with her arms crossed in seriousness, expressing her opinion. I read the manga, and it's not that great, the brown-haired girl replied with a know-it-all and pretentious air, while examining her nails. She didn't even wear gauntlets. Ha, huh, I don't want to hear that from someone who doesn't have a sword, shield, or even a simple bow. How are you supposed to slay goblins? Toga asked, exasperated by the girl's lack of fidelity to the original work's outfit. She even stuck a pony sticker on one of her cheap aluminum shoulder pads. You shouldn't talk to me that way. After all, I'm an anime expert, the brown-haired girl said with an arrogant smile as she played with her hair. How many have you watched? Toga asked. About four, the girl replied, making two peace signs as if it were a significant achievement, leaving both the audience and Toga with emotionless expressions. Pathetic, just pathetic, Toga said in a monotonous tone, tired of talking to that girl, and then turned her back. Really? How many have you watched? The brown-haired girl asked with an arrogant smile, placing her hands on her hips. Toga turned to her with seriousness, about 785, and you don't want to know how many light novels and manga. Her response left the girl stunned and speechless. After that, Toga walked away from the stage, and the entire audience cheered, Toga-sama. In admiration of the blonde who had become an idol to them. She's truly incredible, Uraka commented in amazement, her eyes gleaming as she began to admire Toga. Did you watch all those things too, Midoriya? Mina asked Izuku with intrigue, as it was evident that he also shared those interests with Toga. Let's say Toga surpasses me just a little in anime, but I excel in manga and light novels, Izuku replied calmly, but it was still surprising to the group. How on earth are you still the best student in the class? Kirishima asked in excitement, looking at the green-haired boy who smiled playfully. I'm very good at managing my time to play video games, watch anime or read manga, listen to music, and study, Izuku said, crossing his arms confidently and causing some nearby girls to blush. That sounds unreal. There aren't enough hours in the day to do all that, Momo commented with a nervous and incredulous smile, unable to believe how much time all of that would consume. What can I say, Izuku said calmly, shrugging, while Toga finally reached his side. Let's get out of here, we already have most of the things they're selling, Toga told Izuku, taking his hand. He smiled and looked at her. Hey, Toga, what's the game you've been most excited about recently? Izuku asked his girlfriend, knowing the answer. Red Dead Redemption 2, Toga replied, somewhat surprised that Izuku was asking that question at that moment. Are you talking about this? The green-haired boy said with a big smile, taking the mentioned game out of his bag to show it to the blonde, who widened her eyes in surprise. You bought it, exclaimed Toga, amazed and with a sparkle in her yellow eyes as she watched a halo of light envelop the special edition game cover. Izuku felt happy seeing his girlfriend's reaction. Yep, I'm going home to play it. Are you coming with me? He asked Toga, causing her to look at him with tears in her eyes. I love you, Toga said with happiness, then planted a kiss on Izuku's lips, who gladly received it. All of this was observed by the others, who debated whether to be moved or uncomfortable about their public display of affection. You could even see Gasai Yuno, Lucy from Elfin Lied, and Katona Hakatsura showing their obvious displeasure at the girl stealing the green-haired guy. After breaking the kiss, they looked at each other. He had his arms around Toga's waist, and she had her arms around Izuku's neck. I'm going to call Tomura-kun to join us, Izuku told the blonde, remembering that Tomura was almost as excited as he and Toga about the game. He'll probably bring Toya with him, Toga commented playfully, which surprised Todoroki. Do you know my brother? Todoroki asked them, and they looked at him. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that my cousin Tomura is friends with your brother. Toya has also told me about you, Toga told the bi-haired guy with an innocent smile. I hope you don't mind if we leave, Izuku told his friends, somewhat embarrassed that they had to leave despite having invited them. Not at all, we've had enough. I can't move my legs very well anymore, Kirishima told his friend with a pained smile, as he had been dancing non-stop with Mina for half an hour. The pink-haired girl beside him nervously smiled and scratched her head, perhaps she shouldn't have entered them in a dance competition for half an hour without stopping. Todoroki-kun and I have enough novels to read, Momo said calmly. 
carrying a bag of her purchases, which were relatively modest for someone well off. Izuku briefly glanced at what Todoroki had in his bag and looked slightly surprised. I didn't know you liked isekai and gore novels, Todoroki-kun, Izuku said to his friend, who averted his gaze with composure but a slight blush. It's just curiosity, Todoroki replied, somewhat embarrassed that he seemed so engrossed in something he claimed not to be interested in. Bakugo, on the other hand, took Uraka's hand. I'm going to play Battlefield with a straight face to kick your ass when we play, Deku, Bakugo told the green-haired guy, pointing at him challengingly before turning his hand toward Toga. You too, Toga, the blonde added, planning to defeat her as well. Toga smiled and crossed her arms. Hey, I hope you don't disappoint me, Kachan, Toga told the ash blonde guy, emphasizing the nickname once again. Well, see you at the residence, Deku-kun, Uraka said with a big smile to her two friends before she and the rest of the group started walking towards the exit. See you later, Toga said with a big smile, waving goodbye with one hand, and she was greeted in return by Kirishima, Mina, Uraka, and Momo. On the street later. After saying their goodbyes, Izuku and Toga took one more stroll through the place before leaving the building, now both walking to Izuku's house. I have a feeling my friends really liked you, Izuku told Toga with a small, happy smile that they got along well. Toga nodded in response to what her boyfriend said and then smiled mischievously. But now that we're alone, I can do this, Toga told him, before grabbing the collar of his suit and pulling him closer to her, planting a more passionate kiss than before. This took the green-haired young man by surprise, but after a few seconds, he found himself responding. After a few minutes had passed, they both pulled away, with slight blushes on their cheeks. That was very sudden, Toga, Izuku said with a hint of nervousness, as they were in public and anyone could see them, especially considering their costumes. Toga then clung to him while making a hand walk over his chest seductively. How about we play another game in your room, Izuku-kun? You know what I mean, Toga said to her boyfriend in a provocative way that caused him to shudder. But we shouldn't, Tomura-kun and Toya-kun are coming, Izuku nervously told his girl. We have time before those two arrive, and your mom is still on a trip with Yagi-san, the blonde said, showing no signs of giving up on her goal. Or do you not want to hug me without my armor? She asked, moving closer to Izuku's ear and blowing softly, sending shivers down his spine. You always find a way to convince me, Izuku said with a half-smile. He then effortlessly carried Toga in a bridal style and quickly walked towards his home. It seems like someone's excited, she commented, amused by his sudden enthusiasm. It's your fault for being so beautiful, he replied, turning his head to smile lovingly at her. This unexpected sight of her boyfriend's green eyes, visible through her mask, always managed to captivate her. Toga said, I love you, Izuku-kun, with a warm smile and a blush on her cheeks. She felt like a princess being carried by her lover. Izuku replied playfully, and I love my beautiful goblin hunter, making Toga giggle. She held onto her boyfriend a bit tighter, saying, those crazy girls from before would wish to have a boyfriend like you. Izuku, with a small smile and a slight blush, told her honestly, but you're the only one for me. Exactly, I'm your girlfriend, and no one else can be, Toga declared with a victorious smile. Izuku whispered to himself, when we graduate, you'll be something else, thinking about their future plans. Curious, Toga asked, did you say something, Izuku-kun? He turned to her and calmly said, we left the manga and my shirt in my room. Toga was delighted to hear that and closed her eyes, hugging Izuku happily. She said, I have a reason to visit you again tomorrow, bringing a smile to Izuku's face. He felt truly fortunate to have such a fantastic girl as his girlfriend. Meanwhile, in the back of the convention facilities, Mineta was lying in a dark alley, bound and somewhat beaten by security after attempting to enter the revered hentai section without being of legal age. With a painful smile, Mineta managed to say, my only regret is not having touched a chest in my life. He looked ridiculous in his slightly dented radioactive grape costume before falling defeated with his eyes rolled back. End of the chapter